everybody. My name is Jessica and I work at the JCC. Um, while we are quarantined, I wanted to show you all how you can make challah. Um, so this is, making challah can actually be a pretty long process, but um, while you're home, working from home, taking care of kids, home from school, you can make this and most of the time you don't have to do very much. You just have to let the challah rise. Um, so the recipe that I am using today is actually from Sababa, um, which is a new cookbook. And we had uh, Adina Sussman, who's the author right there. Um, she actually came to the JCC in November of 2019, I believe. Um, and she has a really great cookbook with a lot of awesome Israeli and Jewish foods. So um, I am doing her recipe for the first time for Kala. Um, so I've got everything laid out. Um, I started already um, getting the yeast and water going. Um, that takes a few minutes for them to mix together and to get the active to get the yeast uh, active. Um, I should note and let you all know that I am currently using yeast that might be expired. It's not that it's bad for you or that it will make you sick, um, but yeast is an active ingredient and it's actually alive. So um, I've had it for maybe a little bit past the time that I should be using it. So. Um, if you're using yeast, make sure that you're getting fresh yeast from the store. Um, it lasts for about six months and you should keep it in the fridge. Um, so we'll see what happens with mine, but the process is still the same. So I'll walk you guys through that. Um, so in here, in this bowl, I have five teaspoons of yeast and one and three quarter cup of lukewarm water. So you can see a little bit that the water kind of hard to see, but the water is uh, getting a little bubbly and foamy. Um, so I'm going to give that a few more minutes. Um, and then we're going to add everything. And um, like I mentioned, making challah is it is a long process. So most of it is just kind of sitting and waiting for the dough to rise. Um, so this video will be in different segments um, throughout the day so that you can see how things progress. So we're first going to mix the dough together, then I'm going to show you how to put it in the oven um, so that it can rise. Um, and the reason that I'm going to be putting the bread in the oven is that it's a little cold out um, and it's not warm enough in my home to get the bread to rise to the level that I want it to. Um, but in the summer, I just leave my bread out and, and it definitely rises. Um, so we'll start with there and then we'll keep going. So I've added the five teaspoons of, uh, of the yeast and then one and three quarter cups of lukewarm water. So next I am going to add, let's see, the flour, egg, sugar, honey, salt, and olive oil. So this will be the fun and uh, hands-on part, if you will. So I'm going to add the two eggs first. two eggs. All right. So I've got that in. And then I'm going to add the sugar, which is a half a cup sugar that I've already measured out. So I'm going to pour that in. And we need honey, which is a third cup of honey, which I also have measured out. So I'm going to get that in there and scoop it out a little bit with my finger. Are nice and clean. I've done the 20 seconds of washing, which I always do when I cook, but just wanted to make a note of that during this uh, unique period in our lives. So we get all the honey in there. Okay, as we all know, honey is a little sticky, so this is going to take a minute. All right. Honey is in. I'm going to grab a paper towel. Okay. And then after the honey comes salt. So I have one tablespoon of salt already measured. Put that in there. And the olive oil. I have one third of a cup of olive oil. So I'm just going to pour that in there while I start mixing it. And then once this is all mixed, I'm going to get the flour in. So I will start adding
applying the flour and mixing it with my whisk, but soon it's gonna become way too thick and way too sticky um, to do with a whisk, so I'll get to my hands, and which is definitely the fun part of challah making when you get to get in there and, I don't know, kind of play with it like, like dough and knead it. Um, but you don't wanna knead it too much. So let's see. All right, this is all mixed. And now we're gonna add the flour, which I have laid out or measured out. So this is seven cups of flour. Um, and it says that the recipe actually makes three challahs or two challahs and a bread for later that you can make. We'll see what we decide to do later, um, how many challahs to make, but um, we'll definitely make at least two. So I'm gonna start adding this in a little bit at a time. So I can get it going. Oh, it smells like olive oil, which I love baked goods with olive oil. Maybe I'll make another one while we're all quarantined. I have a few olive oil baked goods that I've made that are tried and true. So, okay, let's add a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna put this down while I stir some more. And this is a great activity for anybody of any age. I would, um, I know that kids would love to play with challah dough. So if you're a parent that is looking for something to do with your kids and you want to celebrate Shabbat and try to have a, a distinction between the weeks, especially with being at home all the time, um, this is a great activity to do with kids. If you're, if you don't have kids, I enjoy doing it. I don't have kids and I love making challah. It is a lot of fun. All right, so it's getting thicker. I'm gonna add the rest of it, or almost all of it, a little bit. All right. And we're mixing. And it's getting really thick. Let's see if I can show you all. So it's getting harder to mix, but I think I'm gonna put the whisk away and get to my hands, which is, like I said, a lot of fun. It gets really sticky at first. Um, but once, let's see. It's good. Let's get this all in. It's gonna be sticky, um, but the kneading it helps make it nice and smooth. Um, I don't know much about the chemistry behind it, but I think it has something to do with the gluten. So maybe you want to research that and have that be a project for your kids to figure out why it stops getting sticky once you need it. So I'm mixing right now with my hands. It's totally sticking to me, um, but you will see soon enough that that won't be the case. So we are mixing. And it smells really good. Smells like bread yeast, which is just such a comforting feeling. I always think of Shabbat when I smell uh, yeast. So whenever I open it, the yeast for the first time, it smells like Shabbat to me. All right. Very, very sticky. Totally sticking to my hands, so let me get this, oops, some dropped on the floor. Not picking that up right now. That's gonna go in the garbage once I'm done cooking. All right, and it's pretty well mixed. And now I'm gonna, um, I have a little bit of flour left in my bowl. I'm gonna put it on the table because then we're gonna start to knead it. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Should have had a little bit more flour. There's a little bit that I missed. So if you, on a floured uh, countertop or table, you want to put some flour down and then you're going to take this out and start making it into a bowl, uh, excuse me, into a ball. So I'm just going to turn this onto the counter and get it formed into a nice smooth and not sticky bowl. Scooping it out. All right, here we go. This is the fun part. We're kneading the dough. There's a lot of dough and it smells
smell really, really good. So you don't want to knead it too much because I believe that that can make it, uh, I don't know, not, not very fluffy. Um, most of my baking skills come from watching the Great British Bake Off. So whatever, I, whatever I'm telling you here is what I've learned there. So if I'm wrong, contact the Great British Bake Off. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna knead this about, I don't know, for maybe two more minutes. I can sing a song. I can sing, uh, I don't know, what, we could sing the JCC, um, the dinosaur song while I'm kneading this. There's a dinosaur knocking at my door. Knocking one, two, three. There's a dinosaur knocking at my door. And he what? He wants to have Shabbat with me. Okay, we'll come back to that song later. So you can see it's sticking together. You can see that the dough is not sticking to my hand like it was before. Um, so we've got a nice ball. I'm gonna do it maybe one or two more times. All right, we've got a nice dough. It's not as sticky anymore. And now that I've made the dough, we're gonna let it rise. So I'm gonna uh, put this on pause. I'm gonna put this in the bowl and show you how to let it rise in an oven for when it's a little cooler outside. So I'll be back in one moment. All right, so we are back and we are ready to get this dough proving, uh, which means that it's rising. So in here, you can see I have the dough. Um, so this is the bowl that I used to mix everything. So I went and washed it and then I put a little bit of olive oil that's supposed to help with the rising. So I put the dough in here and then I took a kitchen towel and I got it a little wet and a little damp um, and that's going to help with the rising. Um, and I'm going to show you what happens next. So um, we are at the oven and I preheated the oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then right when it was ready, right when it beeps saying that it was preheated, um, I turned it off. And so that's got my oven a little bit warm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the challah in the oven um, and that will help it rise a little. Like I had mentioned, it's a little hard to get uh, dough to rise when it's cold outside and when it's cold in your home. So I'm gonna put that in the oven. And then I also have over here is a pan of steaming water. So I'm gonna put that in the bottom of the, of the oven. So once all of that's in, it's gonna create a little steam bath for the dough and that will help it rise. So I've got two layers. I'm gonna put this in on the bottom. All right, and now I'm gonna take the dough Put it in here with the towel. It's off, so it's not going to catch or anything. And there we have it. So now we're going to close the oven and let that sit for an hour. So we'll see you when it is done. And hopefully it's very big because we want it to rise. See you soon. We are back. We have had the bread, the dough rising in the oven for a little bit over an hour. So there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that we're back and I'm excited to keep going. The bad news is that like I predicted, I think my yeast was expired. Um, and so the bread rose, but it really should be much bigger than this. But you know what? This week hasn't stopped us with coronavirus. Next week won't stop us. We're gonna keep going with the follow. So what you're gonna do now is take the dough and you're gonna Gently ooh, take it out of the bowl. Might stick a little bit and get it on the counter. All right. So like I mentioned, it should be a little airier and fluffier right now, but we're gonna work with what we're given and we're gonna have challah. So it smells so good. Okay, so it's out and um, I'm gonna end up making two loaves of challah with, with this dough. So I have this little spatula that I'm just gonna use to cut the dough in half. Okay. Um, so now I 
have two big loaves and I have a floured countertop. Um, I'm gonna lower the phone a little so you can see better. There we go. Okay. So I'm now gonna, I have, these are my two hollow loaves. Um, so I'm gonna end up making two loaves. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to divide each loaf into three because we are going to have two braided loaves. So using this just to help with the cutting and peeling a little bit. All right, so now I've got three different segments. And then I'm gonna do the same with the other. And now we have three. Um, I do try to do a six braided hala. Um, I will admit that I often have to watch YouTube videos to figure out how to get the braid. It's uh, way easier to do three uh, versus six. So that's why we're doing three in this video. Um, but if you are really feeling inspired, if you've done this a couple of times, you've never done the six braid, um, just watch a video and you'll be able to watch a YouTube video to do the six braid and you'll get the hang of it eventually. Um, but I actually have a trick on how we can make three braids look really nice. And so what I'm doing is cutting a little piece off of another of one of the pieces and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it in a little bit. So let me cut another little piece off, put it to the side and I will show you what we're going to do. All right. So I've got my dough and I'm going to roll it out and we want to get it nice and thin because we're going to create three of these long uh, pieces of dough and then we're going to braid them. Looks like it right now, this is probably about eh, two feet approximately. Nice and long, nice and stretchy. That's good. The dough definitely did rise, just not as much as I had wanted it to. All right, so that's one. I'm gonna set it to the side. Just gonna keep going. And we're rolling. We want to try to get them to be the same size. If they're not perfect, that's okay. They'll just kind of pinch the ends together to, to make it work. But I think they're pretty, pretty similar in size. So that's two. And then we're going to roll out the third for this loaf. And don't forget, I have a trick on how we can make this look really, really nice and pretty even with a three braid. Usually a six braid looks a little more elegant but we're gonna we're still gonna make this look very elegant and host worthy all right so we've got three of these pretty much the same length Ooh. pretty much the same length i'm gonna put those to the side and then you know what actually we're gonna braid this one first and then we'll roll out the other one so let me adjust this a little bit more all right so the way we are going to braid is just a three strand braid um, and what you do is you're going to take all three pieces and you're going to here let me back this up a little bit there we go gonna take the ends and you're going to pinch them together like this and that way they're all connected And now you see that they're all connected. And then the way you braid, it's just like if you're braiding hair, is you just go one over, the right over the middle, and now that's now the right one is in the middle, and then you take the left piece, and you go over the middle, and now the left piece is in the middle. And then you go right over middle, and you go left over middle. And you keep doing that until you have uh, braided all of it. So right over middle, left over middle, right over middle, left over middle, right over middle, left over middle. And you keep going. And you just keep doing that. And then when you get to the end, you have the three pieces and you just want to pinch them together and then fold them under so it looks a little nicer. 
All right, and I will show you the finished product once, once it's ready, but you can see the braid. And now I'm gonna show you a really simple way to make it look really, really nice with three braids. Um, I actually learned this um, this past fall. Um, the JCC had a, a call a bake off and I saw a community members from all over came and brought their own kala for everybody to taste. And I saw that somebody did this kala um, with the style that I'm gonna show you. And I just thought it was so pretty and so simple to do. Um, so what I'm doing now is I've cut off a little piece of kala and I'm rolling out the dough into three long pieces again. Um, and what I'm going to do is just like I did with the big piece pieces of uh, dough and braid it. I'm going to do that with the small pieces as well. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. It's definitely a little harder to roll out when it's so thin. So maybe do it in your hands like this a little bit. That kind of helps lengthen it. And then keep going. It's kind of long. Keep rolling. Sorry about that, technology issues with using a phone. Um, all right, so I've got a nice long piece. I want all my pieces to be that long. So, I'm gonna keep rolling. Get some nice long pieces. Last one. All right. So, just one more time. Keep rolling, and if you're done, just hang tight. So, I'm gonna move this. What I'm gonna do now is I have these three long pieces, and I'm gonna pinch them together, and I'm gonna braid them just like I did the other one. It's a simple three-strand braid, so right over middle, left over middle, and just keep doing that until I've finished, and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. Doing it. Okay. So I have a nice long braid. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our kala, our, our, main, our main attraction over here, and I'm just going to take the little braid and I'm going to put it right on top. I'm just gonna kind of pinch the ends together. And this is one way that if you, if it's too complicated for you to do a six stranded braid or you don't feel like researching how to do it, if you just make two three stranded braids um, and you make one small, I'm gonna to try to show you, and you put it on top of the big one, you get a really pretty braid and it looks way more, uh, fancy and time intensive than it really is, but we won't tell anybody. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to braid the other one similarly to the way I just did this one. Um, and then we'll be back and I will show you what comes next. So we'll be right back. So we last left off where we were braiding the kala um, and I went ahead and did the other one as well. So I'm going to show you what they look like right now. Oh, try to get them not to slide onto each other. So as you can see, there's three braids with another three braid. It looks really nice. I'll show you guys an aerial shot in a bit. Um, but what we need to do now is um, have an egg wash. So you can get that nice lacquer coating on top of it. You know when you have a challah and it's a little hard on the outside and it's brown and a little crispy. Um, so what creates that is an egg wash. Um, so I have one egg that's beaten in here. We're not gonna end up using all of this and I'm just gonna put a top over this and I'll use this for scrambled eggs for later. Um, so I have a silicone brush. You can use any kind of brush. If you don't have your, a brush, you can just use your hands. That's fine too. So I beat the egg and now I'm just gonna use this brush and I'm going to really make sure I'm getting all of the kala coated. 
So gonna get every little crevice, every little nook and cranny. I want to get the whole thing to be nice and shiny. That's really what's going to that's what is going to create that nice hard top. So I'm gonna paint this one with egg. Really getting in there with uh, one braid on top of the other. Want to make sure I'm getting under. I don't want any part to go unegged. All right. Get the sides on the bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna flip this around so you can watch the other one. You can really see the difference. The one's just so yellow from the egg, and then the other one is pale. So. Getting the egg wash going for this one as well. All right, so I'm painting. And we're almost done. So when we're done, um, while, I'm, while I'm doing this, I can tell you. So once I'm done washing this with egg, we're gonna let it rise for another hour. Um, having that extra hour is really important. Um, when I was new in my baking, I once did not let it rise and it was rock hard. So you definitely want to let it rise. I'm going to put it back in the oven. That's still a little warm from earlier today. Um, just to let it rise a little bit more. Cause again, it's a little chilly outside. So my apartment's not too warm. Um, so it is nice and egg washed. I'm actually going to save this egg because um, when we are done letting it rise again, I'm gonna do a second coat and that really makes all the difference. So um, these are these are egg wash, these have a, a coating on it and I'm gonna put them in the oven, which is just slightly warm. If it's warm outside or if it's warm in your home, you can just keep it out for another hour. Um, so we'll be back after these have risen for an hour. Stay tuned. Like I've mentioned in the video previously, my yeast has not been great, so these should be a little puffier and fluffier, but we're still gonna move forward and I'll just have to get more yeast next time I go to the grocery store. Um, so I have the remaining egg from before. Um, I'm just gonna give these a little coating. I don't wanna do too much. Um, so I'm just gonna give it one more layer to give it that nice uh, hard out Side with an inside. All right. And we're also, when I'm done uh, putting egg on here, I'm going to uh, put some sesame seeds on. So putting an extra layer of egg will help coat it and help the um, sesame seeds stick to the challah while it's baking. So getting that last layer. Um, and I when I took the loaves out, I preheated my oven to 425 degrees. Um, so you'll want to do that as well. I've done challah loaves with um, as low as 375 degrees, but this recipe in Sababa in Adina Sussman's book calls for uh, 425. So I just did a wash. I actually have black and white sesame seeds, so I'm just going to do a little bit of both, make it colorful and Way to brighten up our challahs a little bit. All right. And now they are ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to put them in the oven at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. And we'll check them out when they're done. Okay, everybody. The time has come. I've been making challah all day. And I just put them out of the oven. I put them on some parchment paper so that they're easy to peel off. Um, so I put them in the oven for, I ended up doing it for about 25 minutes. So just keep an eye on them. Um, you, every oven is different and they're going to cook at different, uh, for different times. But these look pretty awesome and they actually rose a decent amount, which I'm pleased about. So I'm going to try to show you them. And they look pretty beautiful with a nice, brown top of the braid. Uh, let me get a close up for everybody. They look pretty awesome. So I hope that yours have come out as beautiful 
And if not, I hope that they come out delicious. And I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful Shabbat, a restful Shabbat. And I hope you can connect with those around you, even if you've been with them all week or all the past couple weeks. And uh, really enjoy and enjoy the challah. And we'll see you for some more baking through the JCC. Take care. Bye-bye.